So in this segment, I would like to speak about uh, the strategy uh, for the overall Islamic finance industry going forward. And I would like to present a three by three strategy and we'll leave some food for thought for yourself to actually do a little bit more R&D on this and see how we can take these initiatives forward. I will touch on the supply side, the demand side, and the infrastructure needs of the industry going forward. So the three by three strategy will have a total of nine key initiatives that will provide the roadmap for the transition of the industry to mainstream. On the supply side, the top three agenda items, number one is about completing the financial circle. I've already touched in a separate segment that you know banking is there, uh, which, which you can label green, it is done well, but the Kaful and capital market is still amber, and there are at least six to seven segments out there which are blatantly red, i.e. they need a lot of work, including Oqaf, including trade finance, including re uh, retirement and pension planning, including wealth management and so forth. So completing the circle remains very important. So we need to seed, incubate, and build out the remaining eight segments of the financial circle, and this requires national champion uh, you know, in each of the core markets. That's the first on the supply side. The second is uh, we need to create at least 10, the global Islamic finance industry need to think about creating at least 10 super regional retail banks. What does that mean? Today, Islamic finance industry globally has less than 100 million customers. Has less than 100 million customers, right? You can, I don't need to explain to you what is the population across OIC and what is the global bankable population. Uh, the message here is we are still at the tip of the iceberg. We need to start thinking big. There are about 22 Islamic banks today across the world, uh, you know, that which, which have an equity base of a billion dollar or more. And there are the likes of large Islamic banks in Pakistan that have tremendous intellectual capital and experience behind them. And at least 10 of them, 10 of them need to think big need to go out and build multi-market franchises so that they can link uh, you know, uh, different markets when it comes to flow of capital, when it comes to flow of expertise, and create multi-market banks. I'm not even talking about global Islamic bank. There's no such thing yet, right? We need to transition from national champions to multi-market. And third, from a supply side perspective, uh, Islamic finance industry needs to think about establishing fintech accelerators. And what that means is, to stay relevant, we need to embrace and build Sharia compliant uh, fintech ecosystem where we promote technology, uh, you know, technology and financial innovation. Coming to the demand side then, the three initiatives on, on the demand side. One is, students of Islamic finance need to look into how good are we doing the brand and the communication part uh, of, of, the entire, of the Islamic finance industry. Uh, I would submit uh, that there is an urgent need uh, for rebranding and for seriously stepping up our communication capability with the rest of the world. Today, we confuse most of the world you know, with Arabic terminologies. And while all that stuff is important, we need to put the business context as well. We need to look at it in the wider Islamic economy concept. Sharia needs to be the hygiene factor. The differentiator has to be, you've got to be the best bank in town or the, or the best the Kaful company in town in terms of your service excellence and in terms of how you mine that data. Right? So the rebranding and communication so that we are not just appealing to a niche segment but to a mainstream segment and that requires a fair bit of research. The second one is in terms of uh, innovative outreach. What does that mean? What that means is branches uh, is not going to be the preferred channel going forward. Yes, we will always need them, but really, uh, you know, Islamic financial institutions need to start investing differentially in digital channels and in collaborative organizational models. And I leave this thought with you in terms of what kind of collaborative models are needed. You know, the Islamic Bank of the Future, I see, uh, you know, with a, you know, a, a model which has maybe about 10 or 15 fintechs that they're collaborating with. Uh, you know, in each a champion in its own space and be able to reach out, not just through branches, but through smartphones, through tablets, through, through internet channels and so forth. The third demand side challenge for us is how do we become more relevant to the youths and the SME segment. Our market is going to be about youths, is going to be about uh, uh, SME segments. And therefore, we've got to, we as Islamic finance industry, need to have best-in-class leadership position when it comes to startup and SME segments. 
right? So what all needs to be done there in terms of both product evolution, but also becoming more appealing to this segment. The finally, I will talk about uh, the three uh, industry infrastructure uh, initiatives which are needed. One, you know, the, we've got to raise the Islamic finance voice on the G20 and international forums. The fact remains that Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, and Turkey are part of G20, and they need to develop a joint strategy to lobby Islamic finance on the G20 forum. Uh, we need to build influential access to the likes of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank uh, from China, the World Bank, the Basel, uh, the World Economic Forum, and so forth. The second uh, infrastructure initiative is all about is strengthening our industry infrastructure institutions, the likes of IOF of the world and the IFM of the world and the IFSBs of the world. Uh, a thought I will leave with you is we've done tremendously well in the past when it came to uh, building these infrastructure institutions. Going forward, however, uh, are they fit for purpose? Uh, they've got a lot of good things in them, uh, but really we need to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, you know what, if we want to go grow from a $3 trillion industry to a $30 trillion industry, what kind of infrastructure setup do we need? Right? And to students of Islamic finance, um, uh, th this is a, an extremely important area to focus on. And finally, uh, on the infrastructure side, uh, the new generation leadership, uh, the Gen Z need to come out uh, and, and, and the existing leadership need to make space for them in terms of challenging and reconfiguring the board and C-suite leadership. I'll give you an example. Some of the banks have gotten execs from Google and, and, and Facebook and Twitter to actually be on their uh, boards. And the reason is, uh, you know what bankers are saying, we don't understand this technology, but you know, these guys do, and if we can bring these, these, these skills together, then, uh, you know, again, that, that will form the bank of the future or the financial institution of the future. So a three-by-three three framework, uh, something for uh, us to look into. Thank you very much.